You're listening to WINT-FM, where winter is not only in the air, it's on the air. Our guest today is Dr. Miriam Blizzard, a researcher of season celebration at the Arctic Circle Institute. And we've all been invited to join Dr. Blizzard on a test drive of her latest invention, a device for traveling across the globe, back through time, and into the stories of our imaginations. Are you ready, Doctor? That depends. Do we have enough people to celebrate the season? People? People! Not just one person, better we have two, three, maybe a lot. Oh, people! <laughs> yes, we have quite a few. Good, then we are ready. All of the people must sing B flat. Everyone must help to make the B flat. Do not be shy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is amazing. The doctor's invention has taken us to Toronto, home of the Canadian brass.
Doctor, this is great. Can we go on another ride? Okie dokie. Everyone, please sing ass. Bloomington is home to people from all over the world. The city's goal of harmony is expressed by the Bloomington Community Song, commissioned in 2018 as part of the city's bicentennial celebration. We'll now hear from the composer whose work was selected for this honor, Jeff Cannon, performing the community song, Ride. Yes, we always remember our way, and so we ride, we don't race, and we wish this gift of grace for the world from our Bloomington home. Remember when you chase the sun around until you finally reach the light your letter said give me the comfort and the breeze of a red Indiana rock Doctor, I hear ringing in my ears like I'm surrounded by a thousand bells. 
Am I going crazy? What should I do? Quick, you must sing C sharp. Now you are in a city of a thousand bells. Everyone has ringing in the ears, so you are not going crazy. Thank you, Doctor. I see we've traveled through Kiev, to the city whose many bell towers inspired the 1916 premiere performance of Carol of the Bells, based on a Ukrainian folk chant. to travel again. Everyone, sing A. We've gone to upstate New York, where a now famous poem was first published in the Troy Sentinel in 1923. In many ways, the American traditions regarding Santa Claus are derived from this poem. Our narrator, Danielle McClelland, is the executive director of this theater, and we wish her well as she'll soon be moving on to her next employment challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Danielle McClelland.
Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window, I flew like a flash tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. <laughs> the moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer with a little old driver so lively and quick I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick. Mount to the sky, so up to the housetop the coursers they flew with the sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas, too. heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opened his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was white as the snow. 
the stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth. And the smoke, it encircled his head like a wreath. His, he had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk, and laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle. And away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. We'd like to take this opportunity to wish the Bloomington Symphony Orchestra a happy 50th anniversary. Some of our listeners may remember the symphony's beloved annual event, A Night in Old Vienna. Doctor, can we go there next? Why not? Sing E flat. We've arrived at a costume ball inside the comic opera The Flader Mouse, first performed in 1874 Vienna. The tick tock polka involves a man being parted from his pocket watch by a mysterious masked woman whom he doesn't recognize as his own wife. <laughs> Thank you. 
you hear it? Yeah. Hi, Ebert. Well, hi, Don. I've been looking all over for you. What do you think of the <laughs> What do you think of the concert so far? Well, I think it's pretty good. Lots of fun music, and I think Danielle did a great job on the poem. Don't you think so? Woo, she's great. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Speaking of enjoyable things, I have a little present for you. You do? Yeah. Oh, my. And I also have one for you. Yay! Okay, great. Aren't you going to open your present? Well, I guess. I'm trying. Yes, I have just opened the present. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. I love it. How about yours? Okay. I'll open mine now, too. Ready? Oh, my favorite piece of music in the whole world. Bert, how did you know? Well, I know how much you like classical music, and I know how much you love this orchestra. So I knew I had to get it for you. Thank you so much, Bert. That was so thoughtful of you. <laughs> okay, so maybe this sounds corny, but we believe that music is the greatest gift you can give someone. Yes, and Bloomington Orchestra, Bloomington Symphony Orchestra, has been a key, has been providing that gift for 50 years. That's, that's a half century. That's a half century of extraordinary performances, a half century of helping with educational outreach and being a key part of the center of Bloomington art scene. That is pretty amazing. And I, you know, I say this all the time, but it's, it's true. Everything we do, all our concerts, all the outreach we do, we really couldn't do it with the, without the support of our community. For example... Well, our corporate sponsors, uh, Deep Blue Gear and Snorkel Mart, helped make this pr production possible this, tonight. So, you know, let's give a hand for our sponsors. And I would like to thank every single one of you that's in the audience. You chose to come here on your holiday weekend. You chose to buy a ticket. You chose to spend the evening sharing great music with us. So thank you so much for your support. Yes, and when you look into, well, when you look in your, in your uh, program, you see our list of donors. Every person on that donor list has helped make all of our productions, especially tonight, possible. So we very much appreciate all of our donors. Thank you. Speaking of donors, we have a pair of donors who've made an extremely generous offer this year, this year to commemorate our 50th season. They are going to match dollar for dollar every donation we get, which is incredible. So every dollar you give tonight or whenever, um, will be matched by these donors. It's going to give you twice as much for your money. And the match will help us to serve twice as many children who will be playing, who could be playing music for the very first time. And it's twice as much gorgeous music we can share with you. And twice the memories that we'll be sharing for a long, long time. Okay, and actually let me fit one more thing. Um, there are pink donation envelopes in the lobby. Please pick one up if you'd like. You can mail those in. You can hand them to somebody in the orchestra as you leave. You can also donate on our website. But most of all, we want to say we thank, could, you. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> really? We, thank you. We really couldn't do it without you. We couldn't. We couldn't do it without you. Right. Thank you very much. Right. Check, your, check your phone next time. Please sing D.
Back for a night in old Vienna, this time in 1824. Ode to Joy is from the fourth movement of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. to sing E. Here's the Russian dance from the Nutcracker. Thank you. 
Now we come to the time you have been all waiting for. This is the sing-along. We really need your help, otherwise it's not really a sing-along. You will see the words over there, and we hope that you sing with gusto. Feel free to stand up or nod as you wish, and let's do something pretty together.
Doctor, I've always wanted to visit the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Do you suppose? Okay, sure. Get ready to rock and roll! <laughs>